This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by GoToMyPC, Netflix, and Domain.com. Coming up on this episode, 1UP's Garnet Lee is back. We're going to talk about the tools you need for advanced DVD, well, we'll call it backing up instead of ripping. WonderCon, Roger Chang was so excited. The HDTV antenna looks like a photo frame and works pretty darn good. Plus, as always, your viewer questions on today's Techzilla. We're here at WonderCon 2008, and you're watching Techzilla. Welcome to Techzilla. I'm your host, Patrick Norton. And I'm Garnet Lee. We have a great show lined up for you today. Coming up on this episode, well, we asked if you want to know about advanced tools for DVD ripping. You said yes, especially those of you with small children that use DVDs as coasters. We got those for you. One viewer search for the best portable music player that's not an iPod, and HDTV is why they cost so much more than a regular computer monitor. And of course, well, a big old stack of viewer questions. But before we begin, Mr. Garnet Lee, the head of OneUp.com, like the chief of reviews, <laughs> chief of reviews, yeah. chief of reviews. Game Developers Conference last week. What were the big? What were the, what? What's happening in games? You know, one of the most interesting things to me was the PC Gaming Alliance announcement. Which, if you didn't hear about it, PC this, Gaming <laughs> Alliance. This is a crazy thing, and you know what? Microsoft is actually part of this alliance, which is even stranger. Because think about it, Patrick. They are the guys behind Games for Windows. Sure. Are, are we have a magazine, Games for Windows magazine, and it was so successful. Well, you know how that's gone is it's they're still struggling to get the word out, and and one of the big elements behind this <laughs> that is gaming on the Windows platform is not dead. It's really not dead, right? I mean, every time you look at metrics, they actually there's a great deal of argument between who's winning and you know are they actually is PC gaming going away? What it, what it comes down to is people are playing different sorts of games on their sure. PCs and they're getting them different ways. Whether you know it's through Steam or digital downloads and other. Well, places. you always hear about you know it's PS3 versus Xbox and the, and the right. Wii, but nobody ever talks about PC gaming. So PC gaming not dead. Not dead at all by any stretch of the imagination. So the PC gaming alliance it brings to the table people like Intel, uh -huh. AMD, and then also Microsoft, and so they're going to fall. You know they're going to make this consortium. What I don't understand is are they really giving up on games for Windows because one of the points that was made is games for Windows is is more of a branding sort of thing right. so you see that on the boxes you know you see the games for Windows branding <laughs> and and the PC gaming Alliance is going to be more about getting the word out and evangelizing for the PC systems. Or when you say evangelizing, are you talking about evangelizing game developers or evangelizing end well, users to upgrade their machines so they can play the new game? That's or, a good question. I'm glad you asked that, Patrick. Did they not make it clear in Microsoft's keynote? They did. Well, this isn't this isn't a Microsoft thing. This was done this was done offsite at a press conference. Okay. And it's actually uh, the uh, gentleman who's in charge of it is from Intel. Uh -huh. So they brought in they brought in key personnel from all of these players to have everybody equally represented. Uh, Microsoft, for their part, they were all about talking about their Xbox stuff. I right. mean, that's that's what's big for them, right? So in their keynote, they went on both ends of the extremes. They had, you know, the, one of the things that was really cool is if you had Xbox and you were at home, along with watching what was going on at GDC, you could download the XNA Creation Suite, where you could go and look at like these games that students are making and that uh -huh. garage developers are making, and sure. that's really fun, right? The, the, I mean, like the, the sort of like time puzzly games that are showing up. Well, you know, there's all kinds of stuff there. If you look at the sort of stuff that indies are doing right now, there's no reason that we're all playing color block matching games for, for you know download games. There's so much other stuff that can be done, right? Right. And, and so that's really neat, and that's gonna be coming out this fall. They had a little taste of it for right now where you can get a, a, a download and it let you play uh, for 17 days, I believe, was, was it's basically it's like a beta. Right. So I can beta, have some fun, see what they're gonna do, and that's gonna be out in the holidays. That's the XNA developer. That's the XNA stuff, and the only thing, my concern there is I hope they don't come up with a way to charge for it. You know? I mean, I think it would be really fun. You know, you've got places like SMU's Guild Hall where they're making right. games. You know, they're learning how to make games. How fun would it be to be able to go home at night and download someone's project? Yeah. And just play with it and just get an idea for where they're at, what they're doing. I think that would be really cool. That would be very cool. The other end was they showed their big games, and their big games come down to, uh, you know, you've got Fable 2 coming, mm -hmm. you've got Ninja Gaiden 2 coming, you've got Two Human, which has been under wraps for a long time, and then, of course, the big unveiling was Gears of War 2 with Cliffy B and his and his chainsaw machine gun. Now, i gotta, I got to put on my clueless hat for a moment is gear what was that last one gears of war 2 is that a microsoft property or is that a uh, that's a good question actually it is a microsoft property but it's an epic game so okay. epic mega games that goes out in north carolina they made unreal mm -hmm. they make the game but they but microsoft actually owns the license for the all the world any other big sort of non microsoft announcements well there's one conspicuous absence where is PS3's home? Where where is home network you know guys hey, sony i do like isn't you. that I, the I, live on the ps3 I, thing well 
live, there. Not, see what's not cool live, about live there. is live. Is live, it there? It, it's like the the mock sort of people wandering around the. Well, it's like Second Life, right? That's the one. Yeah, it's like Second Life, and and that, that's one of my other concerns. Is that, so the <laughs> Second Life year, is like there with people. <laughs> do people actually go to Second Life on their own? I mean, it's very marketing heavy, and we hear these stats about how many people are going right. there, right? But I, and I, how many millions like Coca Cola spent on their their. Right. So let me give you the scoop on the home. <laughs> let me give you the scoop on home right now, which is that there's no real scoop on home at, yet. Okay. And, and that disturbs me because last year at GDC, they showed us home. And that was neat. And we were like, wow, you know, okay, this is cool. The idea of being able to go with your friends to their apartment, but then play different games. I mean, right now right. in live, you can go to a game and play together with a group. But imagine if you could go someplace and, okay, let's go play Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Oh, you know what? We're done with that. Let's go play, um, you know, some other game. Let's go play... I'm at a loss for words. And these, Another these game. are all going to be But you can go play all these games the... together. Let's go play Burnout together. And then, oh, you know what? We're done with Burnout. Let's go play some strategy game. And you could keep that group of friends moving around together. Mm -hmm. That's neat. I need, to, I need to see it. You know, I want to see it finished. Okay. But there was no, no hint, no sign, no squeak. No hint. And it would be nice if they Obviously, just... the whole Blu-ray thing had taken over. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. What Blu-ray thing? Is there going to be a Blu-ray drive for the Xbox 360? You know, Microsoft talked about that. At one time, they said something along the lines of, if it made right for the business. <laughs> I, I think that that's their easy way of saying, you know what? The business for us was all along getting to digital downloads. Right. And I mean, did anyone really think of the Xbox 360 as an HD DVD player? No. It's so noisy when you run the thing in the first place. It disturbs the, I mean, <laughs> have you heard of 360 run? It disturbs the gaming experience with first person shooters who wants yeah. to watch a. So who wants to sit home and watch a movie like that? I think that they got to where they wanted to. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't suspect, I don't suspect to see the, a Blu-ray drive, but. So you're going for the conspiracy theory. I do. I, you know what? I don't usually buy into them, but it kind of. I kind of. Yeah, I kind of do buy into this one. <laughs> Speaking mm. of conspiracy, you want to. You want to fire up in the viewer comments. What do we got going on? So enough about all of our uh, elite digital lifestyles. Let's hear from real people. Here we go. What, what do we got? We've got first comments come from several viewers who are interested in your Xbox 360, Mr. Norton. Evidently, yeah. you offered this. Did you offer? I was it like, week? anybody want to buy a slightly used Xbox 360 HD DVD drive? Oh goodness. <laughs> well, the value is plummeting as we speak. Yeah. So Jared asked. Uh, well, Jared asked. How much do you want for it? Sammy wrote in, uh, <laughs> oh, I like this. Here's yeah. my offer. My offer is $7.37 American. Shipping, of course, would not be on him. You know, sorry, Sammy's not going to pay the shipping. It's reasonable enough for uh, eBay as prices. And finally, so there's no like $100 packing fee. I can right. You don't there. get to add 25 or 30 bucks to try and make something back out of this. And Daniel, <laughs> Daniel jumped in and said, I'll buy it. I always enjoy watching your show. And when you say you're looking to sell something that you owned, I say, hey, why not? Because I'm still thinking about buying one just for Battlestar Galactica. And, you know, you could get the whole Rev 3 staff to sign. It's a possibility. I'm actually thinking, you've actually inspired me that maybe I'm going to build a machine that's going to do nothing but loop the HDVDs from Battlestar Galactica over and over again. Well, you could. You don't really need a HD DVD drive for that. But No, no, no. In, in, I don't even want to go there. If that wasn't enough Xbox-related content, <laughs> or at least Xbox HD DVD drive-related content, our second slew of comments comes along with response to a question we had last week about getting the Xbox 360 online in the dorms at a viewer's university. Uh, on the ResNet, if you will, which only allows two IP addresses, neither of which is supposed to be a gaming machine. First, we have B, who writes in with, I work for a university servicing student machines, and the last thing you should be suggesting is connecting routers to dorm networks. However, I do know of a way to get your Xbox 360 on the network. Just get another Ethernet card or a USB to LAN adapter, connect the Xbox 360 to the other card, and turn on ICS in that computer. So basically, you go from your Xbox 360 to a second Ethernet connector on your PC and turn on Internet connection share. I was about to say, kids. ICS, internet connection sharing. It's a good thing. Just like the second LAN and the Xbox will connect perfectly. Next up, Dave has another suggestion. I had a similar issue with my Xbox 360 at Northern Michigan University. It turns out the school had an actual site that we could register our game machines on. He's seen Wii's, 360's, and PS3's all on our campus now that can use the internet. So he's going to suggest contacting the school's help desk. Michael shares a bit of his wisdom. He says, I work for the Student Tech Center at Edinburgh University. I don't know if this is the case for the viewers university, but at our school, a call to Tech Center with your Xbox or PS3's MAC address will get you an exemption. Finally, Eric. Eric has a serious warning. 
Patrick, I don't want to rain in your parade, but let me speak from experience. You can and will get kicked out of school for things like spoofing a MAC address. I got booted out of school my senior year last semester from a decent sized university just for that. When push comes to shove, remember that they are the ones in charge of your future, or at least in charge of the tens of thousands you've spent on your education. He just thought we should know that the disclaimer is out there and that it can and will happen if your school's IT department feels the need to crush you. I've got this image now of different cops. I've got, I've got the cops that are going to come get me if I throw batteries in the right. trash. Don't forget <laughs> I, the phone cops. I've got the phone cops, and now I've got somebody who's going to come along. You've been spoofing MAC addresses, young man, haven't you? Well, it, I mean, it's an interesting thought. Universities are, are, are very nervous about being held liable I, I for file that. trading. Yeah, for sense. They're trying to lock their systems down. They don't want strange systems on there. You know, on the flip side, you know, if you want your Xbox Live access, you're going to do what you're going to do. That would suck, though. So it tell would. me, why did you leave MIT? I got caught spoofing an address and got thrown out of school. I just had, I had to play some more Halo 3. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so the consensus is call your school's IT help desk or set up a subnet from your PC and connect your Xbox to that. So thanks, everybody, for writing in on that one. And Eric, I'm very sorry to hear of your getting tossed. That sucks. I know. Well, hey, anytime they want to get a hold of us, techzilla at revision3.com. That's the number three on the end there. Email us. We want to hear your comments, your questions, the products you want to see reviewed. And uh, we're, all, we're actually working on something very exciting, a show next week that has no mentions of any HDTVs, HDDVD, or Blu-ray. I'm sending you an email, and you better put it on. <laughs> Fat chance, says Roger in my ear here. <laughs> Anyhow, today's Dexilla is sponsored in part by GoToMyPC.com. With GoToMyPC, you can access your entire desktop and system from anywhere. No need to configure IP addresses, and it works automatically with firewalls. Download the software to your computer, log on to gotomypc.com, and you've got access to your PC anywhere you've got a browser and the internet. Go to My PC is simply the easiest way to access a computer from anywhere. So work on your office computer from home, your home computer from work, fix your dad's computer from anywhere in the world. The best part? You can try it for free for 30 days. Visit gotomypc.com, click on the Try It Free button, and do us a favor. Enter the code TECHZILLA because it helps us out when you do that. The trial is free, the service is secure, and it's definitely worth a look. Got an HDTV? Then you need an antenna that can pick up signals from the networks. The programming's free, and it looks great. But what doesn't look so good? Those big, bulky, bulky antennas you need to actually pick up that signal. It's back to rabbit ears and worse in your living room, and that's terrible. Thankfully, the folks at my favorite online antenna store, antennasdirect.com, have hidden a very capable antenna inside this attractive picture frame. It looks great hanging on the wall or even sitting on top of your TV cabinet. Now the antenna has a range of about 15 miles with 6.5 dB of gain. The unit itself includes a 75 ohm coax cable to hook up to whatever's receiving your signal. And the cherry wood frame measures 9 inches high, 11 inches wide, and an inch deep. And at only 60 bucks, it's a great way to gain better over-the-air reception without that ugly antenna hanging around your living room. It's a dessert topping, it's a floor wax, it's new shimmer, or it's a picture frame that's an HDTV antenna. Who knew? Go figure. Yeah, all right. So how about we go to some email questions? I'm you in. ready? All right, so this first one comes up, and it suits you because you're an audiophile, right? Uh, well, sort of. You I like call I, yourself one. I like high quality. I like to listen to I want my music to sound as good as possible, or at you least as good as I can afford. Without... Let's call that audiophile, because unless we're going to go buy Macintosh gear, then... I'm in. All right. And you don't mean Macintosh like Apple. You mean Macintosh like the stuff that looks like it was made by Russian oh, scientists in right. the 60s. You, you know that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Anyway, so Yaya emails in with this question. Here he goes. I'm looking to buy a new MP3 player. The easy choice, of course, would be to go with any of the iPods. However, I'm looking for something that's an MP3 player with excellent sound quality. And ah. I'm not sure how the iPod stacks up against the competition. So, Patrick, where do you go for good hardware for MP3 players? Well, the iPods are actually a pretty good start. But let's take a step back from that and kind of say there's, there's three stages to this. There's the, the hardware itself. Right. There's the quality of the files you're putting on the hardware. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. And if you've got you know thousands of 128 uh, kilobit per second MP3s you downloaded off the internet, going for audio file quality audio is pointless because your source is miserable. So if you if you're talking like I'm a serious audio file, um, and you're using you know Apple lossless or FLAC or Windows Media Audio lossless, um, then okay, we're in a good start. To, uh, we're gonna a good space. But if you're not you will. gonna do that on portable anyway. Too big a file size. Well, the truth is, is actually uh, on my full size. I have an iPod, an Apple iPod. Uh, I've, I have several actually because I used to review products related to them. And for my big 80 gigabyte Apple iPod, everything on it is lossless. Whoa. And I'm feeding that into a $200 pair of Biodynamics like DT770 headphones. 
So those were my big like audiophile cans, um, and I, you know, I've got some pretty good headphones for those. Most of my listing though, because I don't like to feel like a target when I'm on the subway, is off <laughs> a pair of sh basically an iPod Shuffle with a, a set of Edomotics that look like cheap in your ear headphones. They sound amazing, uh, and actually the iPod Shuffle has, has a little bit more sort of low end. The original iPod Shuffle has a, had a really nice, well defined low end, and it just sounds really good pumping through. Um, a decent set of headphones. Shocking. So you're good. really convinced that the quality of the player plays into the decoding? Well, it's hard. I got to be honest with you. There's so many good players out now. It's 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 hard to it's it's you know if you're spending you know a hundred bucks or more, it's really hard to find a bad player. You can do it. It's not that hard. If you stick to the major brands, um, I mean, my thing would be start at Hydrogen Audio <laughs> and, and dig into how to rip your MP3s and and how to encode them and, and learn all that part. Yeah, and Hydrogen Audio. If you're not familiar with Hydrogen Audio, is an it's sort of an audiophile. Uh, resource online it's for people. It's a great people. forum. Yeah. It's a great forum, and you know what? It's one of the nicest forums on the internet. People will actually help you there. Happy lossless audio. Happy lossless. Mm -hmm. um, the Zune actually, shockingly good. I was pleasantly surprised. I, I reviewed one of these earlier in the year or late last year, and the Zune actually uh, sounds amazing. You know, I can't. I cannot tell the auto quality difference between. I cannot tell the. Uh, I cannot really tell the quality difference between this and and an iPod. I mean, you know. And evidently you're going to be able to play games on it because at GDC they were showing off XNA now working uh, to where you could play games on the, on the Zoom if that's what you want to do. I like that. Somebody put some very strange video on this too, so we're going to turn that off. The uh, Another one that's actually uh, Arcos, if you're looking for something that's more video oriented, Arcos 605 is an awesome uh, video player. Uh, that also does a pretty good job with music. Zen V Plus, uh, two gigabytes, 70 bucks, the four gigabytes, and we should also say there's kind of a big divide between flash memory players, which usually top out at like eight to 16 uh, megabytes, eight to 16 gigabytes, versus the hard drive players, which are topping out at usually 80 gigabytes right now. Zen V Plus has a lot of high reviews, nice, clean, simple interface on that one. And one of my personal favorites, the iRiver Clicks 2, expensive, but a really nice piece of hardware. That's why I love it. When you pull this out, you don't have an iPod, right. and everyone will ask you, hey, what is that? What is that? It's so it shiny. looks great, and iRiver has always had a great reputation among fans. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's I've I've had some of their products have been better than others. Some of their flash products were they were so like, it's an MP3 player, <laughs> and it's a voice recorder, and it's an annotated nuclear reactor control. You know what I mean? There was like there was all these. You know, for me, I'm I don't want an FM radio, right? I'm I'm carrying around an MP3 right. player because I can't stand most of the local radio stations in San Francisco. Uh, but that's another, that would be another thing to think about. Do you want an FM radio? Do you want an FM radio built in? Uh, you're holding up. These are out of control. These are even more frightening than my Edomotics. Well, these are only 200 bucks. Okay. Okay. These are these are ultimate ears, and ultimate ultimate ears makes these, and they're they're the ultimate ears 2.0 or 3.0. I mm -hmm. forget which ones they are. These are nice little headsets. These guys do in the ear monitors for professional musicians. Right. So this is one of the things you have to decide. Can you? Can you handle can you handle the in the ear feel? So some people don't like that at all. Right. And if you can't, just buy good headphones like Grados. I mean Grados. Grados sixties. They're like seventy dollars headphones. We had a whole collection we talked about earlier uh, earlier in the uh, well, I guess a couple. Wow, oh, it's like three months ago now. Like twenty dollars headphones that sound really good. And some twenty dollars headphones can sound really good. And the reason we're talking about all this is because a lot of the uh, the a lot of the earbuds that show up with an MP3 player oh, they're junk. Are crap. They're junk. Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest about it. Even the you know the Zoom ones that are cool that you know they have magnets and they hold together for behind. They're not bad. They're nothing. Compared you can do to these. a lot better. I, they're nothing compared to these. Are a good set of Grados. Here's my fear. Here's Grado, my... Edomotix, uh, Ultimate Ears, Sure makes good ones. Um, Biodynamics, Koss. I'm now getting the headphones. Grado. All right. For me, the wrap-up one is real easy. It's just this. Don't worry about the electronics so much. Get something okay. you like and you can live with and does what you want to from a utility standpoint. Good signal in and great headphones. Something right. that will really reproduce the sound. It's the same theory I went with at home. At home, I have a, I have a good home theater system. Yeah. I think it's good. And you know, eighty percent of my budget went into Paradigm speakers because right. I wanted to hear good sound. And and you know, the the one last thing to summarize on that one is it's got to sound good to you. Oh, absolutely. Don't I mean? Because like, just because he's holding up a two hundred dollars headphones, don't mean that. Yeah, well, Patrick and Garnet said I have to spend at least two hundred dollars on a set of headphones. Oh no no no! You could spend yeah. ninety bucks and get a great set. You These spend seventy bucks. Get a pair of Gratos. Absolutely. It's our 60s. Absolutely. So the rap is in our ears. <laughs> All right, so let me go. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't pretend to pry into your personal life, but you know, you and Raj evidently made a you nice little post-GDC post, like uh, post -GDC vacation uh, trip, or maybe not vacation. You, you know, a little outing. A little outing. It was WonderCon. <laughs> 
I have never been to a comics convention. My wife, who reads really? even more comics than I do, has never been to a comics convention. So we all headed to WonderCon here in the lovely San Francisco Bay Area. Now, I, like I said, my wife literally reads more comic books than I do. I'm a big fan. And it's basically a comic book convention that's expanded to include everything. It's just full-on nerd culture. Anime, R2-D2 building, movie panels, and of course, a lot of costumes. But rather than me talking about it, Super PA Serafina put together a little video showcasing the highlights of Saturday's fun. We're here at WonderCon 2008 and you're watching Techzilla. Hello, my name is Phileas Fogg. I represent La Légion Fantastique, where we are into science, exploration, and imagination. And we are here at the fabulous WonderCon in San Francisco, California, 2008. Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm here at WonderCon dressed as Poison Ivy. And my motivation behind dressing like this was because I teach a Batman-themed class, a student-run class at UC Berkeley. And I am Captain America, but you can call me LTC. And I also teach the Batman class at UC Berkeley, but as you can see, I'm not dressed like a Batman character, but Captain America is also one of my favorites. CNC aluminum, uh, but it, does, it can take as much as two years, and it can take anywhere from $1,000 to $15,000, $20,000. Hi, my name is actually came here to exterminate everybody, but I just came here to stop and have a good time. I am dressed up as Green Arrow. Um, you know, comic book characters are people that kids look up to for their whole lives, and it's kind of fun just to be that character for a day. It was a little crowded, and I gotta say, all the jokes about certain members of the comic books convention audience needing soap, absolutely not exaggerated. That's that's a PA who shot that? That's PA. That's a good looking video. That's why she's the super PA. Uh, absolutely. It's well done. Her business cards. Way to go, Serafina. And for more information on WonderCon, you should definitely check out their website. Tons of information, including details about the upcoming San Diego Comic Con, which is uh, coming this summer. Just go to www.comiccon.org. 
for the information. And be sure to check out the show notes for links on what you missed and why you probably should try to attend one of the comic book conventions around the country next year. All right, coming up, we're going to do what Patrick called backing up DVDs. It's not child play, rather it's a super secret arcane art form, and Patrick's going <laughs> to reveal it all to you. So there you go. Free file it takes media transcoding to the next level. Plus, we answer age-old question, can you run your PC while it's hanging upside down? The shocking answer, when Techzilla returns. We want to thank Netflix for making this episode of Techzilla possible. I don't care if you're an action, a horror, a drama fanatic, or if you're into the documentaries, chances are your local rental store has bupkis for high-definition movie rentals. If you're looking for a steady supply of titles, especially if you're looking for Blu-ray discs delivered to your doorsteps, you should check out Netflix. Just select your titles online, and Netflix is going to mail them to you. Plus, with 40 shipping centers around the country, almost all deliveries happen in one single business day. No parking, no late fees, no hassle. Plans start at $4.99, and as a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free trial by signing up at www.netflix.com slash Techzilla. And like the dudes on the porch used to say, thank you for your support and do us a favor, sign up, try it out, because that helps us keep this show coming to you. It's time again for the freebie download of the week. A piece of nifty software that won't cost you a penny. Today's pick, the Quick Media Converter. With so many different video playback devices like the PSP, the iPod, even your PC, it can be a real hassle trying to transcode the same files for each unique video file format. Well, before you buy one of those off-the-shelf apps that supposedly transcodes everything, give Quick Media Converter a try. This file lets you transcode your video files into no less than 13 different formats. iPod, DVD player, PSP, even your cell phone. Just drag and drop the files you want to convert, select the file format you wish to output as, the directory you want it to sit in, and press start. That's all there is to it. Plus, Quick Media Converter also features Cam Studio for on-screen capture of your Windows desktop. And webcam support if you want to turn your webcam into a video camera. Like a Swiss Army knife, this little app does it all. And it does it absolutely free. So give it a try. If you don't like it, what do you have to lose? Hey, so speaking of converting media, Patrick, I've heard you have some pretty spiffy ways to rip stubborn DVDs into a more portable format. Well, I, this word, I'm thinking less of the more portable format. You, 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 you have a collection of DVDs. You're right? just talking ripping in general, then. Ripping in general. Okay. And it's kind of funny because you know whether it's it's a four year old that plays frisbee, or if you want to put them on your portable device or your notebook because you don't like to travel with your entire DVD collection, or maybe you want to put your DVD collection on a centralized server so you can access it from anywhere in your home. Um, obviously, in the United States. Um, Copying the content of the DVD disc into another format, breaking the copy protection is verboten because of the digital, the digital money and copyright act basically says it's illegal. This is in the United States. Please, everyone in Finland and Norway, I appreciate your thoughts, but don't send me emails about how things are different in your country because in a lot of ways they're changing because of the way the EU is working. That's a whole other story. Well, you're opening a big can of worms there. Back big to what we were doing. Honking can of worms. <laughs> well, what's interesting, right, is. Um, Take a tool like Handbrake, right? Right. A very popular tool, open I use this, source. I like, I like it a lot. It's a good yeah. program. Takes it from a DVD directly to an MPEG-4. Um, has some pretty cool, a new version just came out. The point, I guess it's point nine dot two came out. Um, has some really cool uh, additional surround sound support, optimized for Apple TV. Um, does surround sound in an MPEG-4 file format. Just some really slick stuff. Sometimes you're going to run into DVDs that aren't going to open. Or they'll open and you'll get gibberish, or you right. can't access it, or it'll basically tell you it's copy protected and I can't do anything with it. And one of the things the handbrake people tell you is that we're not really a ripping tool. We're, we're an encoding tool. Exactly. You know, we're, we're giving you presets and we're, we're going to help you watch your video on your PSP or your iPod or, or wherever you you're going to watch best it. Best darn recompile, you know, basically recompile right. MPEG 2, blah, 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 blah. So you get into a couple of interesting tools. One of the, probably the simplest one, if you're on a PC, there's a bunch of options out there. Forget about them. Pony up your credit card, buy a copy of any DVD. It's from a company called Sliceoff.com. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? This one actually is mentioned in the Handbrake, uh, several places in the Handbrake forums and the Handbrake fact. But it's basically, uh, it's a driver. And it inserts itself in between your applications and the disk, essentially. And it basically, if you go and let's say, whoops, where'd my little, I'll get that one going there. And you get the little fox on there. It's going to sit down there. Did it? It's really funny, Vista is just like an operating system sometimes, but a little bit different. So we're going to wait for Vista to uh, stop doing whatever it's doing. Anyhow, what any DVD is, is essentially is a layer in between your applications or your operating system and the copy protection and the various and sundry devices that have been installed on there. Because basically, 
You it's can't, an intermediary. Yeah, you can't, well, you, can't, you can't throw a lot of copy protection on DVD because you have all these 10, 15 year old, probably, how old are DVD players now? When do you remember? <laughs> you remember when they first saw a DVD player? Why, why Patrick, I'm not that old. Well, <laughs> some of the older folks like myself may remember. They seem to be very old at this point. But you still have to maintain compatibility with all these older players, right? So right. they do some stuff that's mostly designed to confuse computers and doesn't really, you know, your DVD player kind of skips over these things. For example, extra blanks, some odd, you know, sort of restructuring of the code in there. And is Vista still angry with me? Vista won't let me click on anything. It's so sad. Uh, well, we'll skip doing the demo part of that. So you basically open up any DVD, it, it gives you an inventory of the disk, it tells you how the disk is structured, then it tells you all the various and sundry things it looks forward, and at the end of it, it gives you access to the DVD. You launch it on start if you want to, you can turn it off, or you can launch it when you want to. Um, and a lot of applications that can't open a disk will suddenly be able to open a disk if you use any DVD. Now, it's the, like magic. It's like magic. The only downside is uh, there's a free 21-day trial, which I suggest everybody check out if you're curious about it. Uh, the only problem is, is it's a little a, a dear, I think would be the word for it. Um, it's up to $49. Uh, 40, excuse me, 49 euros. They used to do a one-to-one -one euro to dollar thing. Yeah, not so much anymore. Not so much anymore, which basically means if I'm just buying that application, it's going to be like $70. To seventy-three dollars, depending on the exchange rate. Um, let's uncheck that, and that's kind of a bummer. It's not a cheap tool, but if you do a lot of this work and you don't feel like hacking around with a whole bunch of you know, obscure applications uh, for a whopping seventy-two dollars and eighty-eight cents, makes me glad I bought this last year. Um, you can pick up any DVD. You know what I like about using a program like this, and, and you told mm -hmm. me I had it worse off because I'm on Mac, and I use Mac the Ripper, right. which which gets me into anything. Also, the idea here is what's cool is you have these portable players, right. and using different presets, you can get a file size you can live with for a quality you can live with, you know? I don't need 5.1 sound no. on my iPod. So or, I just, or maybe you do want it for your Apple maybe, TV. Maybe I do want it for my Apple TV. So I can make those adjustments, I can build the file right. I want and watch it where I want to. Well, it seems to be it seems to be that Windows tends to be a little more restrictive or a little more sensitive to some of the additional copy protection thrown on right. DVD discs than OS X is. A lot of stuff, like there's, there's discs that that handbrake doesn't seem to open on on the the open because the handbrake's open source you know they've they've got Linux uh, uh, or at least uh, the ones I've used are the Windows and the OS 10 and I believe they also have a Linux format um, but there's stuff that like I can't open on a, an XP or a Vista desktop but I can't open on OS 10 right um, and you know that kind of it's a little like okay I don't know what's going on here but you know, there's some dark art platform. stuff going on there. There's some dark art. And there's stuff that actually won't open up on OS X, which is when you should start checking out. We'll put a link to the really cool directions, um, Fairmount 1.0.2 and DVD 2.1. And I haven't played around with this because I haven't run into anything in OS X won't open. If you do, and maybe it's just because I don't have enough of the cool guy movies, um, there's some pretty good instructions in the Handbrake forums. And it's worth, you know, it's basically worth checking around and looking on the forums for that. Because a lot of people, they really love doing this and they're really getting deep. It's like hydrogen audio. There's a big community here. Yeah. People who enjoy it, and there's a strong number of people who feel like if you bought some media, you you bought the media. You have it. You know, you yes. own it, right? Don't be. Don't do illegal things. Yeah. Use don't your, don't use crack it so you can you know give it to ten thousand people versus your you know favorite peer to peer. Unless you know you're making a political statement and that's your kind of thing. In which case, I didn't tell you to do it. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you and your political statements. I don't know. I, I don't know about well, making a political statement through piracy. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> for people with a certain moral flexibility, right? Because I'm going to get a bunch of emails that I'm evil and I'm encouraging piracy. But look, I've paid for the disc. I own disc. I own you know probably 100, 200 DVDs, and I'd like to be able to access them in Absolutely. the formats you know that I would like to be able to access them in. Yep. It, call me crazy. Call me a rebel. Call me you know who knows. Maybe there's going to be a knock at the door, and the FBI is going to be. The, you know, repossessing all of my computers, in which case my wife's you know what's kill dumb? me. Is this is the kind of silly things that makes us all into criminals for no good reason? Why? Why do we have to be criminals just to want to watch a movie? I just want to put a movie on my Zoom. I just want to put a movie on my iPod. Don't make me into a criminal. Well, I don't know where to go with from that. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, any DVD is definitely probably the, the cracking tool of choice um, on the PC. Uh, Fair Play is a good place to start. We'll put links up on the website. If you've got some favorite uh, tools for getting yourself onto the DVD, getting access to the contents of a DVD that seems to be fighting you, do us a favor, kick us an email, techzilla at revision3.com, because I want to hear what tools you guys are using. These are the tools that I've found the most useful, or at least the people I know have found the most useful. Any DVD I've been using for a while. Mac the Ripper. Mac the Ripper. You like that? I do. It's easy. Well, maybe we no. Yeah, we want to take a minute. We got to give a shout out to one of the sponsors that make this episode possible. These are the people that pay our bills so we can pre 
bringing the show to you. Domain.com are a big supporter of Revision 3, and they have some serious deals on domain names and hosting. Shop around. They promise us no funky deals, just $8.75 to register a domain, and they're going to make that registration private if you drop another 5 bucks. Don't take my word for it. Price out your next domain at Domain.com versus the other guys and see who's got the best straight-up deal. And do us a favor. If you're shopping there, type in Techzilla, T-E-K-Z-I-L-L-A, when you check out at Domain.com, and you're going to chop 25% off the price of your domains and hosting at just $6.71 for a domain name and 25% off all hosting plans. That's as good as it gets. Check them out at Domain.com. And we want to thank Domain.com and all of our sponsors for helping us bring the show to you. This is Doctor Who over at WonderCon 2008, and you're watching Techzilla. All right, Pat, let's do what we do best. Answer email, and man, do we have plenty of them, so let's get to it. I, right. I still can't click. <laughs> <laughs> give it up, give it up, it's Vista. No, it's, it's okay. I want to be, I want to like Vista. I know you do, but you know what? Benedict has a question. You want to answer Benedict's question, you want to worry about Vista. Benedict says, should I be concerned about any ill effects when placing a vertically oriented PC case in a horizontal position? Let me demonstrate. Oh, no, I don't want to yank the plug out of that one. You're going to break it again. <laughs> I'm not going to break it again. Well, Look. okay, pretend if you will. You know, basically, like, he's got, you know, here are possible problems. Optical drives, he's maybe a pain to load in this configuration. Venting, fans are at the back and only on the side. Hard drives. So basically, your PCs, most PCs, right, they have a case, like a mid-sized PC case. Pretend, if you will, that this is a mid-sized PC case. Um, I have actually spent um, four and a half years running my primary PC on its side with one exhaust fan in the uh, power supply and no additional exhaust fans in the back of the case. Uh, why? 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 <laughs> because that's the way it fits in the in basically my my workbench. If okay. I if I stand it up vertically, it it'll only get to about this far, and then it bangs up against. Now you the, don't run the any, shelf. You don't run optical discs in it, though, do you? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, most most optical discs. You know, here let's here. You hold this over here. Oh, I'm gosh. gonna put this We're over here. Break stuff now. No, no, no. We're actually. Raj is already gonna be well, screaming. Well, Vista's already not running. So how much more damage can we do at this point? So I'm gonna All hit right, the so eject go. button on this, and you'll notice something that the. the Look at that, there's a disc in there and it didn't fall out because there's basically tabs inside of your, your optical drives that are designed to hold little tiny tabs that hold the disc in there. Um, hard drives, they don't care what angle they're operating at. Um, I, you know, if you're worried you, about sort of shock proofing on a mobile drive, then I'd say basically operate it flat because that's the way they, you know, a, a portable hard drive, your notebook is designed to resist shock going that way, I assume, because uh, that's the way they're always put inside of uh, notebooks. But I gotta be honest with you, I've, I, or uh, this one has been sitting on my desk with a monitor on top of it like this. And outside of the Vista issues. <laughs> Holy cow, it's back. You look, you fixed it. I fixed it. Look, it, it, apparently it only likes to run on its side. See well, the it's not anymore? too big of a surprise, right? Video game consoles since the, the since PS2 have been vertical or horizontal. Exactly. And you just take them, tilt them up, and away you go. And I got to be honest with you, I see absolutely no problems with operating them this way. Uh, although, who knows? Maybe. Uh, Maybe operating on its side is what created my problem. I'm going to end hmm. that, so I don't want the movie playing back there. Anyhow, <laughs> I, I do it all the time. Works for me. I don't think it's going to cause airflow problems or disk problems. All right, so our second question, <laughs> second question comes from Navik, and he writes, hey, what's a good program to uh, format my computer? I want a good, clean format, and that's from Navik. So now we're talking about, well, there's two things here, right? There's cleaning the computer, and then there's formatting. Are we going to do, are we going to do DOD? Well, there's, okay, well, let's, let's take a step back. There's formatting tools built into pretty much every operating system on the planet. Your, your operating system is going to format your drive when you initially install the operating system, and then if you add additional hard drives, there's usually drive management tools for inside of Vista, inside right. of XP, inside of OS 10, inside of Linux that allow you to format new drives. Good. Then there's non-destructive partitioning. Let's say you're like, I'm going to install a second operating system where I want to have a second partition on this drive, but I don't want to copy all the data off and rebuild everything. So you want to sort of scrape out a partition. And for that, you need a non-destructive partitioning tool. So that's a completely different thing. Or there, there's formatting in the sense of, I want to destroy, yeah, all the data on my machine before I sell it. In which case, I say, just use Derek's boot and nuke because it's the that's bomb. That's the deal. Yeah, yeah, that's the deal right there. I mean, that's multi-pass wipe. It's gone and you forever. Get your, 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 you know, beyond Department of Defense umpteen thousand layer, right? Just it's, be sure. When you click the button, it is, it is the big one. Yeah, and you, basically for Derek's boot and nuke, you create a bootable disk, and it just writes ones and zeros all over the drive over and over and over and over again for as long as you want it to. So. so the next email comes from John. He wants to know, are there any programs that are able to convert FLAX and MP3s? My Zoom doesn't support the FLAC, and that's a for file format. What is FLAX? That's full lossless audio 
codec? <laughs> exactly. Right? Well, particularly... If, Did I get that right? Oh, that would be amazing. You know, <laughs> we can check the internets on that. I've never referred to it as anything other than the free lossless audio codec. Oh, babe, that's probably what it is. Free, free lossless there you audio go. codec. Anyway, so he wants to be able to play FLAX and MP3s on a Zoom. What's it going to do? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you can pretty much convert you know, whether it's FLAC or Monkey's Audio or insert name of your lossless, you know, uh, Apple's lossless, you know, there's, there's a bazillion different lossless codecs. Um, I tend to use something called, and pretend if you will, we're going to use Magic, DB Power Amp. And the DB Power Amp's a free download. And old school. Old school. Old school, but amazing in that it's just a clean, simple tool. And they actually have a really cool, the DB Power Amp batch converter so you can select a huge number of files and automatically convert them. It's going to take a while, right? You're going to hit go and it's going to run for a while on your machine. Um, the downside is for that is you're going to have to pay a couple bucks, uh, I think $9 actually, to get the MP3 support because the Fraunhofer Institute that owns the copyrights uh, to MP3 encoding got upset the DB Power Amp. Uh, was giving it away for free. Well, it's been a long time since I went to the DB Power Amp page. <laughs> it's well, it's a really they've got some really cool audio tools on there and some really slick tools for converting stuff. Absolutely. Uh, they have a professional tool. You know, if you want to, if you if you plan on converting a lot of files from FLAC, I mean, I've pulled some stuff up here, some 311 and, and uh, Hank 3 from off of the uh, Internet Archives. Um, you know, it's there's there's lots of tools out there that'll do this. My personal favorite, DB Power Amp. And you might want to consider, if you're running a Zoom, converting them to uh, Windows Media Audio Format, WMA Format, rather than MP3. It can give you a little more audio quality for the same file size. Christopher? There you go. Christopher writes and he says, OK, why is a 22-inch uh -oh. 720p LCD HDTV about $450, almost double the cost of the same size LCD widescreen monitor, which he said was about 230 bucks. Does <laughs> having a tuner and speakers really cost $200 more, or is he missing something? If he has a Media Center PC with an HDTV tuner internal or USB, couldn't he just add an LCD monitor and have HDTV? Is it AC? Well, it, 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 there's kind of like three things here. First of all, $230 is incredibly cheap for a 22-inch monitor. That is very cheap. If you do a search on Newegg or, or, or Google Shop or Google Shopping, like $230 is kind of, you know, you, at the high end of $230, you're going to get a view Sonic, and there's going to be a lot of brands you've never heard of. Um, so $230 cheap for a 22-inch monitor. Uh, the tuner and speakers are definitely part of it. Uh, additional inputs are definitely part of it, specifically HDMI. There's a cost to the HDMI or the HTCP license. If the computer monitor doesn't support HTCP, CCP, by the way, that's one reason it might be cheaper. Those licenses are 15k a pop uh, for for like basically each individual model, is my understanding. Um, scaling hardware, which is usually inside of a uh, LCD television that's not or an LCD HD TV that's not in an LCD monitor. Christopher, what what, what what Pat's trying to say basically is yes, yes. There's that yeah. <laughs> You know, TV right? runs are probably shorter than monitor runs, so they have less time sort of advertising development expenses. In my um, office right now, we're we're using we're using a combination. We use some Samsungs, we right. use some uh, we use some Dell. Dell has a nice sure. monitor, and they have great input selections. I would say buy something that has a lot of inputs on it, a lot of variety, yes. that you can get your best bang for your buck. One of the, one one thing to think about is make sure if you want to be doing uh, HD content, you need to make sure it's HDCP compatible. Yes, and that's going to usually put a little more. It's going to be an HDCP compatible uh, uh, LCD flat panel is going to be a little bit more expensive in some cases than one that's not HDCP compatible. So. Hey, you know what? Do us a favor. If you got a question, a suggestion, a comment, or an idea, send them on in to us. The address is, as always, techzilla at revision3.com. And do us a favor. Don't forget to check out previous episodes of TechZilla. They're waiting to be discovered and rewatched at revision3.com slash techzilla. All right, you may have noticed we skipped a couple things today. Unfortunately, one of our scheduled guests got caught up in jury duty. She's doing her civic duty, so she could not join us today to the stuff Inkscape. So we're going to talk about that next week. And on next week's show, we got a low buck print server. Basically, those little hardware devices, a lot of them stink. We've got one that definitely works. And maybe if Roger's done with it, a look at how the 360, the Xbox 360, stacks up against Apple's Apple TV as a media extender in your home. Hey, we want to thank everybody for watching. Do you want to thank everybody? Hey, thanks for watching. And you don't ever, how come we don't ever bring up your forums? You guys have a good message board for them. <laughs> you, have, you have an active posting community. I like them. It's good guys. I and need gals. to spend more time in the forums. They're good people. They are. You should say hi to them every now and then. I will, they, like, I, they love you, Patrick. I'm they going to you. leave the taping and I'm going to go log into the forums. All right, there you go. You have it right there. If I can find a login. We want to thank everybody for watching. And we want to thank Garnet for stopping by and checking it out. What's, what's oneup.com? Is that the magic page? That's, it's very easy. Number one, up.com. Number one up.com for all your video gaming news and reviews. Sorry, I just want to give you a solid plug there. That's one up.com. Uh, number number one number one up up.com. <laughs> Until next time you've been watching Texil, I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Garden Lee. See y'all later. Thanks. <laughs>